Now there are many variations, but Scotch eggs are definitely an old time favourite. G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. Now I've had a group of young gentlemen consistently ask me for this recipe, and I mean consistently, it's sort of hounding, but I honestly don't mind because it's actually pretty fun. So I'm going to make it just for them, and they know who you are, and I'll even put a photo up that they sent me of them. So join me today as I make my version of Scotch eggs. Okay, first of all we're going to boil some eggs. Now keep in mind there are a number of factors on how many eggs you want. For example, how much meat you're going to use and also how thick you want to place the meat around the eggs. So for this particular recipe I'm going to place in four eggs. Now I'm going to place it into cold water and slowly bring it up to a boil. And we're going to boil it away for about 10 minutes. Okay, so our eggs have been boiling away for 10 minutes now. So I'm going to take them off the heat and we're going to take them out of the hot water, carefully of course, and let them cool down for about half an hour. Okay, so next we're going to work on our outer layer of meat. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. You can use the popular version, which is say a pork mince, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to use some beef mix. But again, it's completely up to you. Both are just fantastic. The only difference is there's a slight taste difference. Okay, next I'm going to add a couple of cloves of crushed up garlic. Now I've got an onion that I've just roughly chopped up. You can place that in as well. Now if you want to add some chili as well, you can do that. That's completely up to your personal preference. And I'm also going to add about two tablespoons of mixed herbs. And then finally, season it with some salt and black pepper. And just simply get in there with your hands and give it a very good mix around. Just so it's all nicely combined. Now there are many ways in which people use or do form their eggs, their scotch eggs. One way I found personally is to use some cling wrap. So I'm going to place that onto a board there and we're just going to get our desired amount, just form it into say, you know, just a ball, just enough. But it also depends on how thick you want it of course. So we're just going to push that down just a little bit, put some more wrap on top. And then just press it out, just so we can get to a roughly enough diameter, diameter to be able to cover our egg. So once we've got to the desired size, just remove the top film and grab one of our eggs, just go to place it into the middle and then we're going to just cover it up by moving all four corners up. Just around like so. Just so we can get complete coverage, or as much coverage as you can of course. So once done, just simply unwrap and we have a covered egg. Now of course there might be a little bit there, just close up the gap. But apart from that, that's how simple it is, and it's done. So just continue on and cover up the rest of your eggs. Okay, so finally we've made up all our scotch egg balls. So lastly I have one beaten egg, and I've also got some breadcrumbs. So grabbing our first lot, we're going to coat it in our beaten up egg. And then coat it in some breadcrumbs. And you're going to want to do this twice. So once it's been coated, back into the egg. Give it a nice thorough coating. And then back into our breadcrumbs. And it's that simple. And just do the same for the rest of your scotch eggs. Now for this I'm going to use a deep fryer. Now if you feel confident using hot oil on a pot on the stove, that's fine. I just prefer to use a deep fryer because they're cheap and they regulate the temperature much better. So I have this on about a medium temperature which is about 170 degrees Celsius or about 320-330 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to place in two of our scotch eggs at a time and just place those into the deep fryer. Now what you want to be careful of, 
A lot of different recipes call for different times. They can go from five minutes all the way up to 20 minutes. It honestly depends on how thick you have made the meat around the eggs. And many things can um, and many things can factor into that. Also, it depends on the size of the eggs. So the bigger the eggs, you're obviously going to use a little bit less meat. So it won't take as long if you use bigger eggs and less meat. But other people also like to use more meat. So it really does vary. So what I like to do is use a thermometer and I'd like to give it about, say, five minutes at the start. And I'd like it to get to at least about 85 degrees Celsius or about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Especially with minced meat, you want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Because unlike cuts like steak or any other type of chops or cuts of meat like that, minced meat has all been exposed to the air, so there's more chance of getting food poisoning. So as long as it's cooked all the way through, like you would say chicken, for example, you have no worries about getting any food poisoning. So we're going to cook these for about five to 10 minutes for this particular size. But again, I highly recommend that you just give like a thermometer a go, one of these quick check thermometers. They're very handy and pretty cheap too. So you just stick them in there and it gives you an instant temperature read. So we'll give these a go for about five, 10 minutes. They're out of the deep fryer, came up at exactly 85 degrees Celsius. I've cut one of these open and how delicious do they look? And it smells fantastic too, it really does. Also an old traditional recipe, but many variations, but this is just my spin on it. And trust me, it works. So it truly is basically a meal in and itself that when you have every now and then, I know that you will love. And if you've had scotch bags before, give this version a go because I guarantee when you bite into one of these, you'll think it tastes simply delish. So thank you for watching this episode of Todd's Kitchen. As always, I'll leave a list of ingredients down below in the description, as well as links to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Home Handy Hints channel. And please do me a massive favor by giving this video a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another mm -mm, delicious recipe.